Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now trading up 222. We get the Nasdaq up 137. S&P's up 39 and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter. Now, the way you get the newsletter, folks, you come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. You're going to see the opening call right on the top right-hand corner. You just hit subscribe. You can get the opening call for $128 for one month, $595 for six months, which is a savings of $173 at 22%, a year at $995, which is a savings of $541 or 35%. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Everything to gain, zero to lose. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great, man. Yourself? I'm very good. 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 So, welcome back. I don't know. Thank you is, very is, much. Is this our first interview since you've been back? Might be, huh? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, it's close. Uh, yeah. Anyway, two weeks. Uh, nice. Got back, and then Friday I did the show. But yeah. about um, just over a week ago, while I was there in Sydney, Australia, yeah, um, it's 16 hours ahead. It's really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> but Pretty I cool. managed to do my my newsletter every day. There's one day where I was absolutely confused whether it was Monday or Tuesday, but I managed to Yeah, I heard to that it. on your first show. That was pretty cool. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So um, what is interesting is that there was a high in the Dow. I'm showing you the Dow chart right now. Okay. Well, first of all, I should say that while I was there, nothing was mentioned uh, in the conversations I had with the few people that I met, uh, Australians. Um, about the about stocks or anything like that a couple of people mentioned that the market is at highs and they just went on to something else so even there there was this quietness about celebrating new all-time highs that i i've just never seen this before when you get major highs uh where people just aren't talking about it they're not talking about you know stocks that they made a fortune on last week or anything like that so that to me was very important. But while I was there, I kept looking at the charts and I said, wow, the, the peak that I had identified for subscribers to my opening call back uh, on the 27th of November at 20,174, and we went short about, I think, about seven points from the top. It looked great, and then it plunges down to 27,325. And then there was a doji candle and a gap up day the following day and then we started this big move to the upside but i was looking at the charts and the pattern looked exactly the same so we were very fortunate with the very uh, the, the day of the top 29373 on the 17th we were able to the opening the next day to short the market so we are short the dow but and we still have all our long positions because i'm not sure everything's done yet and i'll explain why in a minute but the patterns look exactly the same we've got a peak g it's very unusual in the chapman wave not to go to a d e or f it went to the fourth the seventh highest peak which is g and we did exactly the same thing on the 17th and not only that the uh the s p did the same thing uh, we've got quite a few indexes that you know are at g's that's very unusual um and then we plunged to yesterday's low. So the pattern, you can see, I'm, maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger that, so you can see it better. There you are. So I'll expand that, now you can see it. So the pattern with the gap down yeah. very much matches the low that went to December the 3rd. The difference here is that although the MACD and stochastic did turn down, the on-balance volume was not yet at highs. It was still climbing. This time, what we've got, that's the blue line. This time, the unbalanced volume was right at the peak. It turned down, and we've got that gap. We've got a doji candle yesterday after the gap, and a nice move up today. But this is going to be very important. If we match the same thing, we've got Apple's earnings coming out in less than an hour. A lot of things are going on with yes. United Technologies. Uh, I don't know. Where, I thought the earnings were coming out after the bell, but it might have come out this morning because they gapped down and then they ran quite nicely with Triple M stock. I watch very closely. Um, has gapped down, it's looking very poor. So this is going to be very important because if the Dow is able, we're at. 28,780 right now. Uh, this is uh, 35 minutes before the closing uh, bell. And if there's another big move up tomorrow, yes, we could be matching the very same thing. And the only reason why I mentioned that, and I'm not totally convinced that this is a top of 
significance rather than a short-term top is that that volatility index, and I'm just going to jump to the volatility index right now. Look how it screamed to 19.02 in just in, in matter of two days. It went from the 13s to the 19s, and the, and the market was just what the Dow is only about six, seven hundred points off its all time high. To me, that I said to subscribers to my opening call, that was a little too much too quickly. So I don't know how this will play out because if I look at so many stocks, um, so many of them that are very important to the market are at peaks right now that essentially could be at least short to intermediate term, maybe four to six week tops. So this is going to be how, how we deal with the coming few days is going to be very important. And there's no question about it. If we close under yesterday's low in the Dow of 28,649, I believe we've made a not just a short-term top, but one that will affect the uh, weekly charts as well, and it could last a little longer. So that's kind of the patterns are matching, but two or three of the indicators that I'm looking at, oh, and I wanted to show you this because I've shown you this for weeks and weeks. You know how I've spoken about the nine period moving average uh, above the black, this is the green line, above the black 14 period moving average? Yes. And that when we got the sell off back in November to the December low, the, the nine EMA held just above that black line, look, the green just, a, and it never turned. It turns pink when it crosses negative. Okay. It never turned pink. So to me, that's going to be very important. If in the next few days you start to see that nine period moving down, it's not a timing issue. It is. It is a trend issue. So if that turns pink, it means that we've now, uh, on a shorter term, turned down to the sell mode, and that'll be the Dow. You'll see. I just wanted to show you something else quickly while we're here. Look, the S and P is a little bit higher, so it's going to have to do. A little bit more work to turn to turn down sharply. SPX on X. Let me get that. You see that green line is a little bit above. Yeah. So it isn't as close. And the QQQ, and that's the reason why I think you mentioned it before. Apple is so important here. Look, app, the QQQ, the index 100. Apple's a big part of that. Well, Apple's also a big part of the Dow. Look. It's holding very nicely so far. So I know the parameters to look and just make it real simple. If in the next few days the indices close under yesterday's lows, that's going to be very important. To suggest it, it's not the the, the um, it's not the the virus issue right now. It is really at this particular moment the market is somewhat vulnerable as as I see it to some kind of uh, downturn. If you look at Apple, there it is. Same thing. Uh, the MACDs turned down, stochastics under 80%. Uh, the uh, nine period is above the 14 period, and that's really what's holding it up here. So this is going to be very important for me because um, I haven't really been wanting to grab a lot of shorts because the fact is we, we've gone to this level twice already. It wasn't just the November one, it was the time before, where you pull back a few percent, bam, next thing you know, you're at highs. So we've got to be careful here. Yeah, so I, I, I got one more thing that's applicable for you, Basil, with the, with the Chapman wave. Now, this is sad, folks, but the bottom line is that Cuba just had a 7.7 .7 earthquake, and they're evacuating Miami offices right now for a tsunami. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, not oh. good. Folks, no. come over to our website, TFNN. Go to newsletters, the opening call. You can check it out right now. Basil, have a great one, a safe one.